Hey everyone, Coach Arrow here. On this episode of Behind the Play, we're going to take a look at the last fight on Nepal in our match versus the Washington Justice. Dallas Hill continue to control the point. The back line of the few are in trouble. The Justice do unleash the beat to push them forward to keep them all alive. Corey, even with the blizzard, is probably going to hold on to this one until the next fight as they do clean this one up show slowly but surely. To understand why this play is so crucial, it's important to point out that we're in what we call one fight territory. So we have 99%, the enemy team is, is roughly about 70%, which means that whoever wins the next fight will probably win this round on Nepal. Going into this last fight, the enemy has two very significant ultimates that we need to worry about. Number one, Sigma's Gravitic Flux, and number two, Maze Blizzard. On our side, we have Echo's Duplicate, and we have Anna's Nano Boost. Gravitic Flux and Blizzard are both ultimates that are very devastating to a team. So it's our job to try to figure out how we can nullify the effect of these ultimates. So with the ones that we have, one of the interesting things about Echo's duplicate ability is that she can get an ultimate of any hero on the enemy team relatively fast, as long as they have the ability to do damage or do healing. So in this scenario, Doha opts to duplicate the enemy Moira. And the reason why we want to do this is because it's very easy to generate ult charge as Moira in general. So with the added ult charge increase from Echo's Duplicate, we're able to now have some kind of defensive ultimate for one of these two ultimates. We have healing to go through the enemy Blizzard or the enemy Gravitic Flux. Um, plus, just with the nature of Coalescence, uh, you know, we're able to get a little bit of unblockable damage on top of that. So Moira, you know, is, is a pretty good target for Echo's Duplicate. With our team comp, our backline is very vulnerable. Without mobility, our backline has to find a way to survive against a team comp that can run at them. So as we're retaking this point, we opt to retake on the high ground, which means that the enemy doesn't have that many tools to realistically contest our backline. Knowing this, Washington sets up their May and their Sigma on top, ready for us to push out so that they can try to get advantage of our backline. Doha flies overhead and scouts this out. And as he's pressuring the enemy Sigma, he calls out that they're both up top our tanks immediately jump in. And this is a very crucial part because the moment that our tanks use mobility, that's a pretty obvious engage trigger for a May player in this scenario. They're gonna use Blizzard when our tanks can't get out of it. Knowing this, Note does a little maneuver to keep himself airborne a little longer and a little bit distant from Gamsu. He holds his defense matrix down on the enemy May so that when the May tries to use Blizzard, he's able to eat it, and he successfully does. Now that we've nullified the enemy Blizzard, all that we have to worry about is Sigma's Gravitic Flux. While we clean up the enemy May in our backline, we opt to go aggressive with our Winston and Tracer and do a very aggressive Nana Boost dive on the enemy Sigma. The goal here is to try to get him to use his ultimate in reaction to our very aggressive play. And in this case, we're successful. He uses his ultimate on our Winston solo, which means that we're able to trade these ultimates. And in this case, it works out in our favor. Trading a Gravitic Flux for our Nano Boost is something that we're absolutely okay with. And since we're cleaning up the enemy May, losing our Winston isn't that big of a deal. We're 5v5 at this point. On top of that, we've also eaten the enemy Blizzard. So we're able to use our Echo's Duplicate aggressively now. We can use the Moira Coalescence and push aggressively onto the enemy. Now that we're pushing aggressively, it means that we can finish building the rest of our ults. And our Pulse Bomb comes online, our Self Destruct comes online, and our Rally comes online. And now it's just a matter of using those ultimates to clean up the fight. Doha uh, is going to clone the Moira again. No, oh, the PD hit. from Note though. Unreal, the one ult that they really needed. Uh, he's gonna go in block as well. Doha with the Coalescence, gonna aid the team in healing and damage, but Gamzu already falls. Corey ends up trading, not too bad of a start for the fuel. Decay with the Pulse Bomb could land something bigger. The back, but they gotta watch out for Raw. 80% on the Shatter. If he can get this one off, it might be good enough, but no, Decay ends up finishing him off. There will be a beam onto Note. He's almost gonna fall, but he used the Matrix to get out of dodge just in time. Doha wins the 1v1. Tuber ends up going down as overtime ticks through. Justice still fighting for control on the point. This play overall has a few key parts, but overall together, it's very important because we're able to take the first round of Nepal. And in any match, being able to get the first point in a control map is a very big thing for momentum. And with this momentum on our side, we were able to take Nepal 2-0 and then push that into the rest of our maps where we were able to take a 3-0 over the Washington Justice.